Here are three Monroe calculators. The Monroe Calculating Machine Company was founded in 1912 by J. Monroe. He took a mechanism designed by Frank Baldwin and turned it into a successful commercial machine. Frank Baldwin had invented many different uh, mechanisms in his life, but none of them were commercially successful until J. Monroe came knocking on his door. The first machine that Monroe released was the Model D. The previous models were only made in a handful of numbers and I don't think any of them survive today. But Model D was the first one that was mass produced. Still, they didn't make that many and uh, there are, they are very rare today. The, uh, the, the success really took off with the Model K. That was released in 1921, and the one here on the left is a Model K. It's a very easy machine to use. It has a, a full keyboard with eight columns, a, a carriage with a counter of eight digits and a register with 16 digits. And uh, yeah, let me show you how to use it. You can enter a number on the keyboard one digit in each column and if you turn the crank it gets added to the register and the counter is incre incremented by one the keyboard is cleared so you can immediately enter another number to add and so on the register carries automatically but the counter does not um, so that is a bit of an issue that uh, I'll come back to. If you want to uh, clear the uh, clear the register or the counter, you only have one lever. If you turn it forwards, you clear the counter. If you turn it backwards, you clear the register. Notice that the uh, register the whole carriage lifted up when when I cleared it so that it disengages from the, uh, the rest of the mechanism so addition is easy subtraction is just as easy it's just turning the crank the opposite way very similar to a, a pinwheel machine just turn it the other way Uh, multiplication, however, ah, there, there's one small issue with this machine. When you turn the crank, the carriage is locked down. These these hooks here uh, keep it uh, down in position. And uh, yeah, sometimes it doesn't release it, so you have to wiggle the the uh, crank a little bit to make sure it's uh, it's loose. Uh, otherwise, you can't clear the the register because it ca cannot lift. But anyway, so uh, where was I? Uh, so addition and subtraction is quite easy. And now for multiplication. For that you don't want the keyboard to be automatically cleared after every turn of the crank. And that's what these two buttons are for. You can press this button with R for repeat. And now the keyboard won't be cleared automatically. So if I enter a number and turn the crank the number re remains here. So I can turn a few times in succession. So I've now multiplied this number by 6 and the result is here. I can then uh, shift the whole carriage by turning this knob at the front here. So. I've shifted it only one place to the right, and now I can uh, multiply the uh, tens digit. So I've done it now four times, so in, in total I've multiplied the input by 46, and the result is here. When you're finished, you can clear the keyboard with this large zero button here. 
to switch on the uh, automatic clearing of the keyboard you press this button. This is a, a radio button as it were. Um, as I said, the, uh, this uh, counter it doesn't uh, have a carry. So if you uh, add a number more than nine times, the, uh, it won't carry over. Instead, it actually starts counting backwards. That's because it, uh, in the forwards direction, when it's on zero, in the forwards direction, it counts the number of additions but in the backwards direction it also counts up in red digits it counts the number of subtractions so if you're doing a, a division a long division you can read off the answer directly here uh, but if you're uh, trying to mix addition and subtraction by doing a, a shortcut multiplication or something, then it doesn't really work. Also, uh, what uh, what you could do for some some uh, some things, if you want to keep a total count of how many times you've turned the crank, they've uh, made a small uh, addition here, which is called item count. If you turn this clockwise and then press down the 1, then this 1 gets locked in and it is not cleared when you uh, clear the keyboard. So what you can do now is keep track of a, a total number of times you've turned the crank or the total number of uh, items you've added by, uh, by looking at these uh, yeah, at a sort of uh, yeah, you, you treat these extra digits on the left as a as a separate counter. For example, uh, suppose I've uh, s have an item that's uh, that costs fourteen dollars and fifty cents, and I sell fifteen of them. Then the total cost is uh, is this much but suppose I've now also got uh, uh, another item that costs uh, 1250 and I sell 17 of them ah, come on there you go then the total uh, price is this but in the digits here you can see the total number of items I've sold so 15 plus 17 if I did 15 plus 17 in the counter here it would be nonsense because it would have flowed over from the positive to the negative numbers Let me show you the inside of it, uh, if I can. Uh, let's see. I'll just uh, just lift up the carriage and prop it open. There we go. Here you see uh, a set of gears. These are the intermediate gears between the um, keyboard mechanism and the register here. A bit further back, there you see the uh, the rod that uh, increments the counter. If I turn the crank, you see it making a sort of a, a grabbing movement, and that uh, that increments the counter. Behind there, you see uh, uh, yeah, sort of a wave. 
uh, and that's the carry mechanism. And uh, yeah, that's uh, after the digits are added and the carries are sort of noted down, when that passes, the carries are actually performed and it sort of uh, waves through the digits. And the actual mechanism of this machine is a stepped drum. And that's down here. It's difficult to see, but you can just about see that there are um, uh, gears here that uh, drive these intermediate gears. If I enter a few numbers, the, each digit is represented by uh, two, step, two stepped drums, or rather a stepped drum that's split in half. One half uh, can supply the numbers 0 to 4. So one half has uh, a range of teeth from 0 to 4, and the other half has 5 teeth. So here you see the ones with 5 teeth, which are either shifted and engaged with the intermediate gear or not. And then there follows a the other half of the stepped drum, which is really a step, because it goes from uh, yeah one to four uh, teeth, depending on how far it's pushed into the path of the intermediate gear. You can also see that uh, if I press one, two, four. You can see that uh, it get, something gets pushed to the left. One, two, three, four. And if I press five, something gets pushed from the right. Yeah, and those are the two halves of the uh, steps drum. So that, this was the model K. And uh, yeah, the model L is right next to it here. This is essentially exactly the same machine, except it's half sized. That makes it a lot lighter and much easier to use. Uh, the keys are much easier to press in, although they are a bit small. And the crank is much easier to turn, takes much less effort. Clearing the register is also very easy because the carriage is so much lighter. Everything else is exactly the same. I, uh, I can show you on this machine the serial number which is hidden right at the front just below the front edge. It says uh, K160 and then a number. The K is, of course, a, of course the model. The 16 means it has 16 digits in the register, and the 0 is the version number. Uh, I don't know exactly what the difference is between the di all the version numbers, but um, I know version 3 is one which has a second. Uh, counter in the register that uh, does have a, a carry mechanism so that one doesn't need the item count uh, system anymore. The, uh, yeah, the model L, this one is uh, the model L200X so 20 means it has 20 digits in the register and the X means executive I'm not, I'm not really sure what that means, what that entails, being an executive model. Maybe it's uh, the nice uh, painted finish, which is uh, sort of uh, 
um, black with uh, yeah crinkle paint with uh, a green undercoat. It's quite beautiful. Um, this doesn't ha have an item count uh, mechanism here. Uh, they used to have. Uh, it consisted of a, a clamp which folds down and pushes down on the uh, the one button and holds it down. But yeah, if people didn't use it, it was just in the way. It was a bit bulky, and uh, people tended to uh, remove it anyway. The third machine I have here on uh, on my table is the model KA. The A stands for automatic, and that's an old model K with uh, an electric motor. I've been trying to uh, replace the electrics, make it a bit safe, but I've not uh, finished yet. You can see that on the right hand side, instead of the uh, manual crank, it just has a knob. You can remove that and replace it with a manual crank so that if the electrics fail, you can still use it. By the way, these, uh, uh, the crank is very easy to remove. This little switch here allows you to pull, pull the crank out. And uh, there you go. And you can just push it back in. The electric machine, yeah, it is exactly the same as the normal manual machine. Uh, yeah, the, the, these two buttons on this one, it actually says repeat and non-repeat. Uh, this button should uh, have clear or zero on it, but yeah, they must have replaced the button. It must have uh, broken because this one says error. Um, yeah, it has the item counts uh, knob here. It has an extra switch here, which allows you to switch off the bell or mute the bell. Uh, I haven't actually uh, shown you the bell yet. If you subtract uh, something and uh, if you subtract something so that the carry goes over the uh, over the edge of the uh, the machine then you hear a bell or if you add so many things that it overflows then you hear the bell there we go and you'll notice that the carry doesn't go all the way to the end that's because the carry mechanism is only in the body of the machine and it can only reach to the last digit that's above the body of the machine. This is very rarely a problem because very rarely do you have a carry that goes from the topmost digit of the input number more than two places to the left. That's very rare. And, well, if it does happen, you hear a bell, so that's okay. Uh, the, um, yeah, the electric machine, it has, uh, yeah, it has a, a plus and a minus, so instead of turning the crank, you just press a plus for a clockwise turn and minus for an uh, anti-clockwise turn, subtraction. Very straightforward. Another thing I haven't uh, shown you yet is uh, this. These are uh, indicators where you, for where the comma is, the decimal comma or decimal point. So you can uh, you can show where the decimal point is during your calculation or keep track of it. Uh, the model L has the same, but there it's uh, the control is at the top. And it shows a, a red line through uh, through these holes between the keys. On the, on this one, it's uh, yeah, they're just flaps that you turn over. And yes. That's about it, really. 
Uh, so these are the Model K, the Model KA, and the Model L of the uh, Monroe calculator. Thank you for watching.